fly that Laura mentioned briefly um, is living in my head. And again, for those of you who have been to the jungle and you know that butterflies are not serious at all, they're not a cause, but they're somewhat annoying because, for those of you who don't know, butterflies lay their, they're a parasite. They lay their egg on the underside of mosquitoes. Mosquitoes bite mammals, or in my case, my head, and they can feel the heat of the mammals. So they drop, these eggs drop into the mosquito bite, and then this little larvae starts growing. Um, and in order to grow under the skin of your head, it has to eat you basically so it's, it's eating your skin which is just a bit annoying because it's like a little pinprick and if you're trying to sleep you can just feel this thing growing inside your head um but as i said it's not serious at all but um you can't squeeze them out if they're um alive because they've got these rearward facing barbs so you have to suffocate them and joe used the super glue from that i got from mending my false tooth and basically covered the breathing hole and then the butterfly had a little epi in my head and squeezed it out. Um, I also had leishmaniasis. Ben Fogel made a big drama about leishmaniasis um, when he got it on one of his trips. Um, I had the, the, the mild version. It can mutate into a version called mucocutaneous leishmaniasis, which eats away your soft palate. You're left with no nose or mouth permanently, basically, which wasn't doesn't sound very appealing. Um, but I the, convinced the local doctor to give me 20 days of intravenous injections which are self-administered and that dried up and went away. It would be lovely at the end of a journey like this if I could um, tell a story about spilling out of the rainforest, running down the beach and flopping into the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, annoyingly there's this big metropolis called Belém with about four million people and a corresponding massive road network of, of, um, of roads and I had missed, we were using Google Earth to navigate at this point because we couldn't get the topographical maps off the Brazilians. Um, and um, I just used telegraph pylon and a road looked very similar. And what it actually was, rather than a road, was just this big wall of razor grass and thorns. And, and it basically took us forever to spill out onto this road network. And when we finally did, we'd only got two weeks to actually arrive. At, for some reason, I had also booked all my flights and told the, some potential media teams when we might be arriving. So we had this horrific um, period where we were sleeping for two or three hours a night, walking all the way through the day, through most of the night as well. And with about 21 hours to go, I still got 85 kilometers to walk. And um, I, was, I was just done, uh, absolutely destroyed. And um, I said to Cho, Cho, I'm exhausted. I need, I need to have a rest, I need to sit down. And Cho, you know, he's, he's Peruvian, not necessarily the most politically correct human being in the world. He said, don't be so gay, Ed. And I said, I said, I don't. I'm really not being gay, if you were to use that word in that manner, which I don't, obviously. Um, anyway, I passed out, my, my head passed out. And basically, I, I had my head in the road, passed out. I was out cold for about 20 minutes, and it, which I, I can only put down to like extreme sort of exhaustion. And then when it came round, Chosen, well, maybe we should have a couple of hours sleep. I think that's probably a good idea. So with about 19 hours to go, we still had 85 kilometers um, after a little rest to go. We worked all the way through the day, all the way through the evening, all the way through the night. And then when the sun came up, um, these media teams did indeed descend on us. And, and, and rather than exhaustion, we just became elated. We started floating down the street. Um, and you know, when you're by the seaside, you can smell the salt in the air and then you can hear the sounds of the, of the seagulls crying. And then we rounded this corner and um, we could see the Atlantic Ocean stretched out in front of us. And um, Joe and I instinctively grinned at each other, shrugged off our rucksacks and started legging it down the beach. And also, I don't know why instinctively, we started holding hands as we, um, <laughs> as we ran down the beach. And I thought, typical, isn't it? The one day the world's media is looking at you and you're skipping down the beach with your new Peruvian friend. Again, somewhat outdated joke, might have to change that one in this talk. Um, in, in, in modern times. If you look at Cho's face though, he deserves a huge amount of, um, of credit. Um, he always knew that he'd never be able to say he was the first person to walk the length of the Amazon. He joined in month five, but that wasn't what it was all about. You can see the elation there. He, he'd never seen the sea before. I had to explain that he couldn't drink the sea because it had salt in it, and I'm not even making that up. Um, he joined this expedition because he wanted to embrace life, but also because he saw somebody in need that he wanted to help. And I have no doubt that if he hadn't joined the expedition, I wouldn't stand be standing here to talk to you guys now, so he deserves a massive amount of credit. Um, and that is my story. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Final next. Top man. 
Any questions? Yes, ma'am.